If you like this video, please press the subscribe button to subscribe to this channel and also give it a thumbs up. The charge of being anti-science is one of several often used derogatory terms used by evolutionists against creationists. Now you will find some Christians for whom this charge is legitimate, but it is not a label that generally applies to creationists. In fact, most active creationists love science. The problem most creationists have is the pushing of what can be best described as atheistic mythology in the guise of science. The legitimate definition of anti-science is a set of attitudes that involves the rejection of science and the scientific method. The definition commonly used by evolutionists and others is the rejection of mainstream scientific views and methods or their replacement with unproven or deliberately misleading theories. The difference between these two definitions are considerable. The first definition is about the rejection of the very principles of science in general, such as the scientific method. The second focuses on specific theoretical concepts being pushed by institutionalized science. In other words, the first one, which is a legitimate use of the term, is a rejection of science in principle. While the second is used against those who disagree with specific claims made under science, there is a huge difference in the meaning of these definitions. By the way, in the second definition, I will give you one guess who gets to decide whether or not a theory is unproven or deliberately misleading. One of the things that are ignored in the usage of such derogatory labels is that a disagreement with and challenge of current widely accepted concepts in science has often been a key to how science progresses. If this attitude had existed in the early 20th century, special and general relativity, along with quantum mechanics, would have been rejected. Scientists such as Albert Einstein and Max Planck would have been dismissed as being anti-science. The use of such derogatory terms is for the purpose of protecting certain ideas being promoted as science that are highly questionable, but promoted as proven fact. This tendency is often based on philosophical and political grounds. For example, universal common descent evolution and the Big Bang are philosophically connected to atheism, and man-caused climate change is known to have its roots in leftist thinking. The political nature of the use of such derogatory terms is evident by the fact that people who opposed mandatory masks, close downs, and vaccines during COVID-19 because such mandates are an attack on individual liberty, I found this label applied to them, whether or not they question the scientific claims involved. Those using these labels are basically saying that you not only have to agree with them in these areas, but you also have to allow them to decree what solutions you must follow. Such a tyranny of the experts is exactly what kept the Catholic Church in power for centuries. What caused them to lose that power was when the average man got the Bible in their own language and were able to read it for themselves. What makes this current version of tyranny of the experts even worse is that you are not considered an expert unless you agree with certain viewpoints. As an example, when I was younger, I struggled with both relativity and quantum mechanics. Part of the problem was the way the textbooks presented them. They came across as mathematical abstractions that needed a more physical explanation. I spent years working on such an explanation and even developed a pretty good model. I was able to do this because I had the freedom to work on the problem. However, that model made a prediction that I was able to test that showed it to be wrong. Also, at the same time, I discovered a solution to the problem that I had had with relativity and quantum mechanics. Because of this effort, I not only have a better understanding of both theories, but you will find me defending them better than those who blindly accepted them. 
Furthermore, it has led me to discover a possible way of unifying general relativity and quantum mechanics, which I am currently working on. All this resulted from the freedom to investigate something that the tyranny of experts does not allow. The point is that the use of such derogatory terms as anti-science presupposes that the viewpoint of those using the term is the only legitimate one. They insist that anyone who disagrees with that viewpoint is against science itself. Ironically, this is, in and of itself, a real anti-science attitude because it violates the contingent nature of scientific thought.